Welcome back, everyone, to another segment of Rabbi Jeff's Quick Abishir, where we attempt to understand the meaning behind the instructions of our sages and how it's relevant to our lives today. We do this, of course, using the thoughts of our teachers before us and try to make them applicable to our times. Feel free, please, to contact me with any comments or questions at rj from lj at aol.com. The Perkyavis Podcast is a project of the Intentional Jew Podcast Network, where we actively encourage Jews to think and engage in the search of how to be intentionally Jewish. Check us out on intentionaljew.com. Okay, today's mission is Mission Yud Gimel, Mission 13, and we are up to um, Rabbi Shimon. We are dealing with, he used to say three things, and the three things that Rabbi Shimon said was, Have you Bekriyashma? That a person should be careful with Kriyashma. Ubitfila, there is there is two different opinions as to whether or not we say um bitfila, whether or not we say um bitfila in the um in this part of the Mishnah. And the the here in mind it happens to be written in parentheses, but um it is in fact uh, correct to to include tfila. Ukishatim is palel. And when you daven, altas tfilos keva, don't make your prayer fixed, elo rachamim v'sachanunim, but rather make your prayer into requests for mercy and for um, supplications, lifnei amokim in front of God. Shene'emar, as it says, proving that that is what davening is all about, ki chanun v'rachum hu, that God is a chanun v'rachum, he is merciful and gracious, erech apayim, um, long suffering Vrav Chesed of great kindness, and he can he change his mind on the evil that we've done. And don't make yourself into a wicked person. Okay, the Mishnah, as beautiful a Mishnah that it is, is a very difficult Mishnah. And let's take a look. Let's take a look at the pieces at the pieces of the Mishnah. First of all, have you be kriyashma ubitfila? That a person has to be careful with kriyashma and tfila. Careful with what? Careful to make sure you daven them every day. Make sure you say kriyashma. Make sure you da- you say tfila every day. Are you telling me that I have to have kavana? That I have to have the proper thoughts when I when I daven? That's great, but that's not here. That's in a halacha sefer. That's in a that's in a book all about davening. That's not in Pirkei Avos. There's no what, what's the ethical teaching? Remember, we've been focused on ethical teachings, on the the teaching of a mida, the teaching of a characteristic. You're teaching me this Mishnah as as well as the next one, but seems to be telling me about an action that I have to be doing. I have to be careful with my davening. I have to be careful with my tefillah. What it's not it's not about an action. It can't be about an action. What's the mida that is being presented to me? What's the characteristic? that is being presented to me. That's problem number one. Problem number two, al tas tfilos keva. Again, I have the same problem. Don't make your davening into a fixed practice, but rather as it be, it has to be that you're asking God, supplicating in front of him. You are, you are requesting things from him. Again, what's that doing over here? That's a part of Hilchas Tfila. It's part of the laws of Tfila. In a class about Tfila, then we'll talk about this. But in a class about Pirkei Avos, why is this here? Plus, when you bring me a proof text, when the Mishnah Pirkei Avos brings me something to want to try to prove something, so it's proving something that I might not have known otherwise. First of all, why would I not have not known that that is what Tefillah is all about? And why you bring me a proof text from Yoel? Now, there might be some of you here that are actually wondering what Yoel is. Yoel is one of the prophets. It's not just some guy you sit next to in Shul, Joel, right? Yoel is one of the prophets of the Jewish people is one it's canonized in the in the in the Torah of the you know in our Tanakh okay and I understand you know Tanakh is important and all of the Nevi'im all the prophets that are mentioned in Tanakh are of course in, incredibly important but don't you recognize any of those words we actually had many of them in last week's parasha this is these are these are words that were taught in the Torah. Why do we need to bring a proof text from Yoel rather than bring a proof text from the Torah itself? My 
next problem is Alti Rosh Bifnat Smecha, don't make yourself into a wicked person. Why not? Take responsibility for what you've done. What's wrong with saying I'm wrong? What's wrong with saying I've done something that I shouldn't have done? I've behaved in a way that I shouldn't have behaved. I thought in a way that I shouldn't have thought. I, 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 I did something that I shouldn't have done. What's wrong with that? That's a good thing. That's what spurs a person on to tshuva, spurs a person on to repentance. So why would the Mishnah, why would Rabbi Shimon teach us that we shouldn't make ourselves into wicked people? And then my final question is, what's the connective tissue here? What's the tzada shava? What's the thing that runs through and is common in every one of these three dictums that Rabbi Shimon taught us? Being careful in Kriyashman Tfilah, don't make your tefillah into a fixed practice and don't make yourself too wicked. Let's talk a little bit about davening. From where do we know that we have an obligation to pray? It's an interesting question, and it's actually not a simple question. There is a dispute amongst the sages of the exact source and requirement for tefillah. The Torah tells us that we have an obligation, that we have an obligation to love God and to serve Him with all of our heart. And the rabbis ask, what is avoda shebelev? What in fact is service of the heart? And our rabbis say that service of the heart is tefillah, it's prayer. So the Rambam, Maimonides, in the Sefer HaMitzvot, writes that there is a positive commandment, the mitzvah has say from this pasuk, from this verse, to pray every single day. Now the Torah doesn't give us any details, the Torah doesn't say how many times a day, the Torah doesn't say when, where, the Torah doesn't say what should be part of our tefillos. All we, we know, says the Ramam, is that we have an obligation every single day to turn to God and to pray to God. The Ramban disagrees. And if I was giving a class on a detailed class on the obligation of davening, I would go into this Ramban in a much deeper kind of way. But suffice it to say that the Ramban says that there is no biblical obligation to daven every single day. We would turn to the Ramban and we would say, but wait a second, what about the Pasuk? What about the verse that Maimonides quoted that said that, that it's service of the heart? Ula Avdai, and to serve God with our hearts so then that is davening. What are you going to do with that drasha? What are you going to do with that understanding? What are you going to do with that pasuk, the Ramban? So the Ramban would explain that the drasha is what's called an asmachta. All it is is really just, it's a hint from the Torah to something that we understand rabbinically, that we have to have a relationship with God and therefore we have to pray to Him. And if you look in the Torah when it says, when you have to all you serve Him with all of your heart, that's a reference, it's an allusion to davening, but it's not an obligation to davening. The Ramban continues and says that it could be that it's instructing us that included in the avoda shebelev, in the service of the heart, is praying to God in times of crisis. Because if you look at the context of where we're taught about davening, we really, we understand that we have to turn to God in times of crisis that our hearts and our eyes need to be to God alone, like the eyes of slaves to their masters. It's a mitzvah to cry out to God in times of trouble, in times of crisis, when our enemies come to attack us. And that's the biblical obligation to pray. The biblical obligation to pray is in times of trouble, is to turn to God and to remember that God is there during times of crisis. But in a daily obligation, says Nachman, and he says the Ramban, we don't have a daily obligation. Both agree that there is a biblical obligation to turn to God in times of crisis. So then what are they arguing about? What's the machlokes, what's the difference of opinion between the Rambam and the Ramban? And this, again, I could speak about for hours. But I'll tell you one amazing idea. That there are those that explain 
that the Rambam and the Ramban, Maimonides and Nachmanides, agree that the obligation to pray is only in it is in a time of an ace ratzon. The Rambam says it's not only an ace ratzon, not only in a crisis, but it's also daily. But that they agree that you have to daven in an ace ratzon in a time of in a time of trouble. The Ramban limits the obligation of davening to the obvious outer crisis. When there is an enemy attacking, when there is sickness in the Jewish people, when there is something dangerous that we're facing, that's when we are obligated to turn to God. Says the Rambam, I agree that you have to daven in a time of crisis. And I agree that that's what we learned from the Torah. The Torah tells us in a time of crisis, you have to turn to God. But says the Rambam to the Ramban, every single day is an Ace Ratzon. Every single day is a potential crisis. We have no idea what's coming down the road today. We have no idea what's going to happen in our lives today. We have no idea, as we spoke the other day, whether today is going to be our last day or not. And therefore, every single day is a challenge. Every single day is a crisis. Every single day is an ace rut zone. And therefore, we need to daven every single day. I agree with you. The Torah mandates us to daven in a dangerous time, in a time of crisis. You, Nachmanides, limit that to obvious external crises. And I, my man, is am telling you that every single day is an ace ratzon. Every single day is a crisis. Every single day, I have the opportunity to be able to save myself, to protect myself. I have the opportunity to be able to turn to him and to recognize that everything that I have and everything in this world is coming from God. Every single day. I have the ability to remind myself and to turn to him and to say to him, I understand that everything comes from you. When the Mishnah says, Have Isaiah Bekriashma Ubitfila, what the Mishnah is saying is that we have to be careful. Not careful to make sure we dive in with kavana, careful to make sure that we do it correctly, that we say the words correctly, that we dive in at the right time. What the Mishnah is telling us is understand the power of what's in your hands. The power to be able to be mekabel ol malchus shamayim to every single day to accept upon yourself the yoke of heaven. When we say Shema Yisrael, we're not just saying the line it's not just a great Jewish mantra. When we say the word Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, we are connecting ourselves to God, not only declaring our affinity to Him, not only declaring our loyalty to Him, not only declaring our belief in the one God and our connection to that one God, but when we say the word Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, we are saying that we take up our place in history. Shema Yisrael, hero Israel, we're turning to Yaakov Avinu, we're turning to Jacob, our forefather, the beginning of the Jewish nation. And we're saying that we have a connection with God. Hashem Eloikeinu, Hashem Echad. That first of all, Shema Yisrael, we're, we're part of the team, we're part of the Jewish people. But Hashem Eloikeinu, Hashem Echad, God is also ours. We've, we have our own relationship with Him. We have our own connection to Him. And every single day when we say the word Shema, we are being the Kabel Ol Malchus Shemai. We are accepting upon ourselves the yoke of heaven. We accept upon ourselves the yoke of heaven in good times and in bad times. And that's the reason that we cover our eyes when we say the Shema. Every person here that has had any kind of Jewish education has been taught that what's the reason that we cover our eyes is because we want to concentrate on the Shema, which is not wrong but there's a greater depth to it. We cover our eyes, we darken our lives, we stand in absolute blackness, and we declare, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We're able to see God with clarity, even in the darkest of moments. And then we turn to Him and we say that I don't just believe in you, I don't just have faith in you, 
but God, I rely on you. And that's the Shemona Esrei, the Amidah. Thirteen paragraphs in the center of the Amidah that I turn to God and I ask Him and I request from Him everything that a human being would need. My personal spiritual requests, my personal material requests, the communal spiritual requests, the communal material requests. We throw, we cast our burden on God. Heavy Zahir, a person has to be careful with davening because a person has to understand the incredible gift that they have given. That every single day they have an ability to be able to declare their commitment to God. Every single day they have an ability to be able to recognize that I am in an ace rut zone. I am in a moment where I need God. And they're able to rebuild that relationship. So many times we have relationships. We don't have that opportunity to be able to renew them. We wait till an anniversary, till a special moment. We have an opportunity three times every single day. That's why we have to be careful when something is so powerful, something is so mighty, something is so huge, we have to be careful with it. And al tast filos keva. Don't make it into, we translate a fixed practice. I want to translate it as something that's a burden. Look at it as an opportunity. An opportunity to refresh your relationship. And that's why we bring the Pasuk from Yoel. Because it's not just that God is a Rachamim, a Chanun, v'Rachum, who Erech HaPayim, v'Rav Chesed, that says that in the Torah also. But it says, v'Nicham al hara that God can undo the evil that we've done. He can, he can lift it off. He can wipe it away. He can give us an opportunity to be able to start afresh and to do tshuva. God has the ability to change the decrees of evil. And that's the essence of tefillah. That's what my tefillah accomplishes. Every single day, I have an ability to be able to renew that relationship. But if I look at myself as evil, if I look at myself as useless, if I look at myself as something that is terrible, someone who is terrible, then there's no motivation to turn to God and to beg of Him. There's no motivation to daven to Him. Because how can I beg somebody who hates me? And that's why at the end says Rabbi Shimon, Al Tihi Rasha Bifnei Atzmecha. Don't see yourself as being wicked. Because if you see yourself as being wicked, you will see yourself as being useless. And you won't use this incredible gift and tool that I've given you. That's the connective tissue between these three pieces of the Mishnah. Davening is an opportunity to come closer to God, to ask God, to connect to Him. Always be aware that even though God has incredibly good reasons to bring disaster, he gave me an opportunity to be able to avert that disaster. He gave me the opportunity to be able to pray and to change what could have possibly been. And when I recognize that he wants to hear from me, so then I will take up that opportunity and live up to that challenge and responsibility. Who was Rabbi Shimon ben Asano? Rabbi Shimon ben Asano was a Yorei Chait. And we talked about him being self-aware and sensitive to the needs of others. That he saw the world not in terms of himself, but he saw the world in terms of that outside of himself. He was able to see God and be able to recognize that this would be something that would be insulting to God. We said that he was a Roa Eshanolad. That when he was asked, what's the best quality that you should develop? He said, Roas Anolad. And what's the worst quality? He said, to, to, not to, 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 borrow, to borrow and not pay back. 
And we said, what were those, what was, what was that? We said that that was really the quality of being able to consider things from your perspective. To be able to understand things from your perspective. To want to be a nachas to you because I see it from your place. And when we turn to God, we're not just begging for ourselves, but we're understanding God in the way that he relates to his world. And we're looking at ourselves, what might I have done to knock out the equilibrium in this world? You know, we say that the word tefillah is from the word lefalel, to judge. That when a person davens, they have to be self-critical. Where is the self-criticism in davening? We turn to God and we say, God, can you heal somebody? God, can you send parnasa? God, can you send peace to the world? Rebuild the temple. Where is the being self-critical in davening? Because at the same time that I'm turning God and asking him to fulfill my needs, I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, what role do I play in that? What have I done to ensure the health of other people? What have I done to ensure the well-being of other people? What have I done to ensure that there was going to be a geula, that there was going to be a redemption? How does God look at me? And how am I fitting into the plan that he has for the world? A yore chet is a person who is petrified at doing the wrong thing because petrified of hurting the one who asked him the one who commanded him, the one who directed him. And that's what Rabbi Shimon ben Nassanel is coming to teach us, that this concern for God and for our world has to manifest itself in the place that it counts the most, has to manifest itself in our davening, in our tefillah, that when we approach our tefillah, we have to recognize the power of our tefillah. We have to make sure that our, our tefillah is not a burden. You ever notice the way many people daven? Think about the way many of us talk about davening. I have an important meeting after davening. All right, you know, I'll, I'll daven quick and then, I'll, and then I'll go to the meeting. Well, we planned on leaving to go on a trip at a certain time. Yeah, I'll, I'll get up a little before that. I'll give a quick davening and then we'll go. Davening is not an obligation that we have to fulfill. Davening is an ace ratzon. We're standing in front of the master creator of the universe at a time that the world is sitting in balance, at the time of a crisis. And we're turning to God and we're saying, I recognize, God, that you see this world in crisis. And therefore, I pray to you, I praise you, I ask you, I thank you. Therefore, I want to take my place in trying to help fix this crisis, to be able to right this wrong. I want to recognize the incredible opportunity that I have, and I want to recognize that even my tefillahs are important. And that's what the Yore Chait, Rabbi Shimon ben, Rabbi Shimon ben Nisano, that's what he taught us. That's his Shloisha Dvarim, his three things that he left, he brought into this world. Not an instruction about tefillah, but a lesson about how to view ourselves in the world, how to view our relationship with God, and to step outside of ourselves and to recognize the role that we play in God's world, and therefore to try to fix and improve that role so that danger could be averted and the world can continue to grow and continue to be a great place. My thoughts. I am open for comment. Hey, Rabbi, good morning to all. Good morning. My, my, my commentary here, well, as usual, you, you, you brought us to majestic heights, Rabbi. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, my commentary here is, well, it's, it's like more of a shot, I, I suppose is the way of putting it, about the first part, about the Shema and praying. It basically says here, <laughs> just show up, show up on time, 
especially Micha, make sure you stop your, you know, your affairs and what you're doing and, and do it. So it's basically, it's, it's a much lower level than what you said, but it's also very important uh, by just showing up, showing up on time, making an effort to stop what you're doing, to, show, to be there for Micha, and just more simple matters than what you explained. Right. So there is no question that the simple understanding of heavy Zoyer, that a person should just be careful in, in his davening and be careful to be there and to daven, no question about that. My contention, though, is that it can't stop there. That it has to be, when it's talking me to, telling me to be a Zahir, it's telling me that I have to be, I have to be watchful in my, in, as, a, as a character trait. That I have to recognize opportunities. I have to recognize the relationship with God. It's got to be something deeper than just fulfilling an obligation of tefillah, fulfilling an obligation of davening. That's why I took it to the place that I that I took it, and and I couldn't I couldn't stop just in the simple place, which I'm not denying that it exists there, but I couldn't stop just in the simple place. Correct. You know, I always I always feel that when you talk about davening, so it's touching an incredibly raw and sensitive Jewish nerve. Because, you know, the, the, many of us feel, you know, okay, I'm good in my character. You know, I've, I've, I've been working on my character for a long time. I'm trying to be a better person all the time. Davening is something that is one of those things that from the beginning of our lives till the end of our lives, we're working on improving davening. You know, Shabbos observance, I observe Shabbos. You know, I, I learned to Shabbos somewhere along the line. I know how to keep Shabbos. I, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. But davening is something because it's, a, it's an emotional connection to God. It's something that we're constantly trying to, to deepen. I think that that's also what Rabbi Shimon is saying. Have you saw your B'Kriyashma B'Tfila? When you recognize how, how critical it is, you won't feel like you're wasting time when you're, when you're constantly reviewing davening, when, when you hear another word about davening, when you think more about, about tefillah. It's not like you're spinning your wheels and you're just going over old material because it's something that is so powerful and so critical that it's something that we constantly have to be, um, we, we constantly have to be going over it. And once again, the, 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 the simple commentary here emphasizes also the reward uh, of davening. And it, and it is a, it's a quotation of a rabbi, Menachem de Lanzano. Does he mean anything to you, rabbi? No. 1515 to 1623. It's all in Hebrew, so I'll let you do the translation. Enosh ki ta'amin ba'el v'takir. Hachi, Birkat Hashem, he a Ashir, Ha Birkato, Tivorach, Toacha, Bahach. Oh, yeah, it's so small, my God. Bahach Sio, Avodato, Hiot, et la Ashir. If you take a picture of that, yeah, if you take a picture of it, I, I, I have to see it. It's hard for me to, to, to hear it. Okay I'll, take, okay, I'll take a picture of it for next time. Okay. I, I want to address, um, Jackie asked the question, she said, please repeat why the words quoted from Yoel and not direct from the Torah, because the, in Yoel it adds this sentiment, the, the sentiment of that God is a nichem ala ra, that, that he, he changes his mind from evil knows he can, turn, he can turn everything around, and I have that ability to be able to do that. that, it, that it's not just that God is merciful and that he lets things go, that, 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 he's, that he's merciful and he's, and he's kind, but that he's nicham ala ra. The word, the word nechama, is a very interesting word. What does the word nechama mean? Translate that word. Nechama. Comfort. Right? We go to, to be minachim avel, right? To comfort the mourners. The Shabbos after Tisha B'av is called Shabbos nachamu, nachamu, nachamu ami. Be comforted, be comforting my people. When God wanted to destroy the world in the time of the flood, he said, Kinicham, God, God changed his mind from the design of creation. He looked at it and he said, I, I don't like the way it's going. Nicham means to change your mind, because that's, by the way, what Nicham is. The only time you're ever going to get comfort when you, God forbid, suffer loss is when you start to get it in a little perspective. And until you put it into a little bit of perspective, 
you're never going to be able to deal with that loss. That's what Nechama is. And when I go to be Menachem Avil, the different perspective that I give you, it's not from the brilliant words that I say, which rarely does anyone say anything brilliant at a shiva. But it's, it's about the fact that I was there and I sat with you and I gave you the feeling and the message that you matter and that, and that I care. And that, that was able to take away some of the pain of being alone from a loss and allowed you to be able to now start the process and to see things in a different way. And that's what so, a nechama is. So are the words renouncing punishment, is that? That's is that renouncing punishment. That part is different. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, correct. I don't like that English translation. But that's, that's what's different in the Pasuk and Joel than what's in the, than what's in the Torah. And that's what the, that's what the theme of this is, is that we have the opportunity to, to flip a switch. We have the opportunity to change something by turning to God. By saying to him, you know, I'm sorry if I've offended you. I want to try to help you fix the world. I want to be your partner in fixing the world. That is Micham Alara. That's that's flipping around the the negative. 